Hey everyone, Brayden here coming to you with a very special video. I've been debating the past couple of weeks talking about this, what we're gonna be talking about here today because look, We've heard Disney make a lot of statements lately that sound exciting. We're investing $60 billion in the parks. At Disney's town hall this week, parks chairman Josh DeMauro said that they have enough room to double the size of Disneyland. CEO Bob Iger also said to employees this week that he wants to start building again. More specifically, one of his top priorities in 2024 is expanding the theme parks. The reason I've been critical of this stuff and just generally been hesitant to cover, you know, all these things that they've been saying is we've been burned by empty promises many times the past few years where the executives, they talk a big game. And meanwhile, we see very little actually happen. Not much has been happening, especially at Walt Disney World, which is the main focus of this channel. The fact is Disney's films are underperforming at the box office and they eat up a lot of money. Disney has a lot of capital locked up in Disney Plus, producing content for that, as well as this Hulu acquisition that they're working on and merging their streaming services into one app. Furthermore, just generally, if you look at interest rates, for example, those have resulted in investment in anything becoming extremely expensive because borrowing has become extremely expensive, which affects everyone from the consumer to folks like Disney, who is very reliant on these construction loans to finance these theme park expansions. So that's definitely a contributing factor to the lack of new investment at Disney domestic parks, even if the executives are serious about wanting to do something. As a result of all this, I've adopted, and I think a lot of you guys have as well, the stance of, I will believe it when I see it. Let's wait for Disney to announce something of substance and then get excited. And we seem to be getting closer and closer to something of substance being announced for over at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Our sources suggest that the plan to put Coco, Encanto, and Indiana Jones, where Dinoland currently sits, is progressing. It is getting closer and closer to being greenlit. It seems like a lot of the holdouts are actually Walt Disney World level executives, uh, the VPs and the president over there. There's still a lot of back and forth on the budgets and things like this. And of course, there's the whole question of, you know, do those properties even belong in the animal kingdom. When Parks Chairman Josh DeMauro was talking to Entertainment Weekly the other week, which we covered last video, he seemed to be redefining what the theme of the animal kingdom was to something much more broad than conservation and man's relationship with nature. He was saying that the park is about exploration and adventure and things like this, which is the same thing that they did with Epcot. You'll recall it used to be a Living World's Fair, and then they changed it to this theme, which is just about possibility, uh, which is very broad. And basically, it seems like what they're doing is they're taking the parks at Walt Disney Disney World that aren't the Magic Kingdom and just making them more Magic Kingdoms, right? The stuff that they can't figure out how to put in the Magic Kingdom just ends up going in these other parks, which has resulted in a loss of thematic cohesion across Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios in particular. And it seems like that issue is now going to be coming to Disney's Animal Kingdom, which does seem to be the most thematically consistent park that we have at Walt Disney World, thanks to the past stewardship of its visionary, Disney legend Joe Rohde, who is now no longer with the company but the bigger issue I see is, you know, forget about these expansions for a second. What about everything that already exists at the parks that is in desperate need of updates? So today, just for the sake of putting some cautious optimism out there, just for fun, maybe it's the holiday season that's got me like this, I don't know. We're going to actually take a look at one of Disney's latest winks at the fans, which has to do with Figment. If there's one attraction at Walt Disney World that needs some love and has most certainly earned it with its merchandise sales, its journey into imagination, at Epcot. A couple of weeks ago, Disney posted a video on their social media channels where Figment went to the movie studio to gather new sparks of imagination, as Disney called it, where Figment is walking around with a book of ideas. And at the very end of the video, there is a not so subtle hint that Imagineering is working on something for Figment with Disney saying, quote, we can't wait for you to see all the things he dreams up next. More than likely, and I'd most certainly hope, this is a reference to Journey into Imagination, finally getting an update 
at Epcot. An update to that ride would inject some much needed excitement into an increasingly disinterested fan base that has been given so little of substance lately. We're looking over the berm at Universal where new lands are popping up at every resort worldwide. They've got a whole new park on the way that is getting closer and closer to that summer 2025 opening target. Historically, I just haven't really been a big Universal guy, but their new additions, they really do seem to be approaching Disney levels of theming and attention to detail. Universal is no longer this bridge between amusement parks and Disney level theme parks. They are really trying to give Disney a run for their money and it certainly looks like they are succeeding. Disney most definitely sees what's going on down the street at Epic Universe. That's why they keep giving us all these teasers and saying all these crazy things about we're going to invest tons of money. But you see Universal isn't saying they're going to do stuff. They're actually doing it. They're developing entire new parks while meanwhile the roadmap at Walt Disney Disney World consists of opening a pathway in Planters area with a Walt statue in the middle of Epcot and a retheme of Splash Mountain. So if there's something to this plan for updating Figment, what could that look like? Well, firstly, the pavilion is past due for an exterior update. Based on the most recent rendering of the pavilion, featured on the Little Golden Book Disney's releasing, uh, it's a Figment book that they're releasing, a kid's book, we see that the pavilion is back to its original purple and blue paint scheme. Going back to the original look or doing any sort of new version inspired by that original look would most certainly freshen up the exterior. Also, I might add the glass on the pyramids on the outside, you've probably noticed when you've been there, those definitely need some sort of refinishing or total replacement. That would certainly go a long way. Then there's the matter of finally fixing the inside. Over the past decade, at an increasing rate, we've seen Disney put out merchandise that features Dreamfinder, perhaps testing the waters of bringing back Figment's creator, the Dreamfinder, from the fan favorite original iteration of Journey into Imagination. And in that children's book Disney's releasing, I mentioned before, what do we see? Not just Dreamfinder on the cover, but also his Dream Catcher from that original iteration of the attraction. The Dream Catcher itself was put on display for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary as part of the Destination D23 event. It really seems like they're testing the waters and that if there was the money and the will from the executives, if they actually put their money where their mouth is, Figment's book of ideas it wouldn't be that hard to come up with what should go in Figment's book of ideas. You know, they had an attraction back in 1983. People still talk about 40 years later, but the linchpin really is, where is the money? Are the executives serious about this? They post videos like this trying to get us all hyped up, and it does seem like the noise from the park's chairman and the CEO, as well as from the park's social media team, does seem to be ramping towards something. Now it's really a question of, is this worth getting hyped up about, or is it another thing where it seems like there's something in the works and then we go another few years without hearing anything further? Disney can keep twiddling their thumbs, but no matter what, Epic Universe is coming. It is on its way. And Walt Disney World, it needs investment. And obviously, an answer to Epic Universe will need to be bigger than updating any one ride. We need big expansions like the Dinoland Overhaul at the Animal Kingdom and doing a big expansion at the Magic Kingdom, which is in desperate need of more guest space, more capacity. It's the most popular theme park in the world. But as I've highlighted many times, we know with modern Disney, it takes them forever to get anything substantial developed and built. Tron took four years, and that was just a copy of something they already had open out in Shanghai. Pandora it was a similar time frame. In the short term, though, just simple ride updates that can be done in a smaller time frame, those would definitely give folks more of a reason to add some days at Disney to their vacation while they're in Orlando to check out Epic Universe come 2020. We found out in September we're getting an update to Test Track thanks to General Motors and their continued investment in that pavilion. That's quite exciting. Something that can be done shorter term, like updating Journey into Imagination, would most certainly be a boost not just to fan sentiment, but also a sign to regular guests that, hey, we are still in this race. We are still doing new things. We've still got it. We've still got that, you know, that spark, that spark of imagination, I guess you could say. Oh boy, now I'm adopting all Disney's copy they put on these videos. The current version of the attraction with Nigel Channing and Figment leaves a lot to be desired, I think it's safe to say. The current iteration of the attraction isn't anywhere near 
its potential, what you could have in here. A large portion of the original ride track was actually cut out due to budget constraints as part of the short-lived 1999 update, which was called Journey Into Your Imagination. I don't know if you guys knew this, but the ride used to be much more substantial. If you look at the actual ride layout before and after, they cut out a lot of stuff there, which is pretty wild. There's the Imageworks area upstairs, which used to have all sorts of cool exhibits and things for you to check out after you got off the ride, which is now mostly walled off and not being utilized for anything with the exception of the area right under the pyramids where in recent years we've had the DVC lounge. There is so much the Imagineers have to work with here, things that they've wanted to do for decades. But as always, it comes back to what we've been saying here for years, where is the money? Well, at the Disney Town Hall this week, Bob Iger made clear he wants to be at the forefront of innovation and his focus is in large part on expanding the theme parks. Here it is, Bob. Here is the place to put some money. It shouldn't cost too much. You don't have to design a whole new building. You don't have to come up with something to put inside of it, you know, some totally new IP or trying to, you know, port something from the studio's business over to the theme parks, you know, try to include a movie IP. Here you have the already established creative from generations of Imagineers ready to be put back into action. It's simply a matter of doing it. And that seems to be Disney's issue lately. So here's to putting a bit of hope out there that the doing it stage is upon us. There are some possible signs of this being the case beyond just words from executives and teasers from Disney's social media team. There's also the prospect of rate cuts heading into next year. That's been the talk of the town in the finance world. If that were to happen, it would most certainly make borrowing money for expansions and ride updates at the parks much more feasible on the accounting end of things. It's not to say Figment is for sure getting a big update anytime soon, but at least we are getting some sign from Disney here that there is an interest in doing precisely that. And if they do pull the trigger and finally announce any big new investment in the parks, I will be right here to bring it to you. So be sure to subscribe with those notifications on. Also, I'd be remiss not to mention that Disney has just announced that on December 5th, which is Walt's birthday, the center area of Epcot called World Celebration, we pre reviewed last video will be finally opening and the Epcot crater will officially be no more with the exception of the new Communicore Festival Center building which is still under construction that is not opening on December 5th but the walkways and the planters and the Walt statue they will be opening on December 5th so if you are heading to Walt Disney World this December you'll finally have the opportunity to get your photo with the Walt Dreamer statue that we've seen the art of and previews of for years and years he's finally been installed on on a massive bench behind Spaceship Earth. Disney's doing this whole thing, you'll notice, where the entire middle area, if you look at it from the bird's eye view, it's not symmetrical. And that even includes the Walt statue himself. He is not centered on that bench. It seems what they're trying to do is they're trying to embrace a more animal kingdom, you know, sort of animal kingdom entrance type organic approach. Uh, if you look at the way the pathways are laid out and the way everything is, even the shapes of how they did the plant designs, the landscaping, the placement of everything, um, they're really doing something that is more organic and less of the inorganic geometric look uh, with the symmetrical Epcot hub that we used to have. So the question is, will that more flowy, you know, very wooded look actually work? Uh, when it comes to Epcot, we will find out on December 5th. Also be sure to check out the Mickey View store if you haven't already. We've been getting lots of orders out just over the past 24 hours, uh, which has been so awesome. I wanna thank you all so much for your support both with the store, the grand opening of that, and also just the channel in general, all of you watching here. It has not been the easiest year with Disney giving us so little of substance, but nevertheless, this has been the best year yet for the channel, and the year still isn't over. There's lots more on the way. From the Mickey Muse Magic Studio, this is Brayden. I'll talk to you soon. Have a magical day.